everyone wants to be a star until they have to put in the work, right? right. And there's a ton of work. There's a lot of benefits to running your own your own business, right? The flexibility, it's, it's unmatched. Right. But if you would bet on yourself to be successful and you're able to get some of the anxiety tempered by working with someone at Fran Coach, right? Everything else kind of you know builds from there, I think. Hello, everyone, and thanks again for tuning in to the latest edition of Fran Coach's Franchising 101 podcast. I am Tim Parmeter, founder and CEO of Fran Coach and your podcast host. Uh, today, we have a, a another installment of what always continually is my favorite segment, which is called In Their Words. And in these segments, uh, we're going to hear directly from Fran Coach clients who have become franchise owners. We're going to talk about their backgrounds, what led them to consider franchise ownership, how they navigated the process with the Fran Coach team, as well as what franchise they chose and how it's gone so far. Super excited to hear about this. This Today, we've got a corporate kind of refugee, been super successful in the corporate world, just started to get a little sick of working for other people. I don't know if that resonates with anybody. Um, and then turned to Fran Coach in a let's say, unique fashion, uh, how, how this one got connected with uh, with our team. And then we're definitely going to hear all about their journey. Uh, but before we do that, quick reminder of who we are. Frame Coach is a national search firm dedicated to working with individuals interested in owning a franchise. We're partnered with over 600 franchisors in about 70 different industries. Our number one goal is to help get you properly educated on franchise ownership to determine if this is the path for you. If so, we're going to help you find your absolute best fit. All right, so that's a bit about us. Now let's get to the good stuff, which is our guest today. And again, these in their word segments are always my favorite uh, to, uh, to, to have. And we've got a guest joining us today. Uh, ben Floyd is with us from lovely Charlottesville-ish, Virginia, and uh, going to chat with us about his journey to franchise ownership. Mr. Floyd, sir, thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me, Tim. Good to see you. You as well. Um, excited to, uh, to to chat with you. And we've done a bunch of these where we've talked to our clients that kind of moved through and become franchise owners Um this is certainly a unique situation. Uh, it's not the, not the first time you and I have have met and talked, um, but uh, excited to hear about this. And also, you're the first. This you're you're a first um, of our clients that we've had that actually you and I didn't work together through this. Um, you got stuck with somebody on Team Fran Coach. We'll we'll address that uh, situation here in a little bit. But right now, this is all about you, my friend. Um, give us a little scoop on 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 you, kind of your your backgrounds into like pre franchising. Yeah, pre franchising. I, I was actually trying to do the math um, a few weeks ago when we started to take this larger venture with uh, with Argadec. Twenty two years in the tech IT space. Um, really heavy on kind of the customer support side, started out literally as a, you know, a mainframe computer operator, uh, working second shift, um, had the, uh, you know, the opportunity to, to take on larger roles. I was a, uh, Microsoft trainer for a corporation, uh, you know, used to sell out classes for advanced Excel felt like the Beatles cause they would sell out in like three or four minutes. It was amazing. Um, and then just progressed, right? So um, had the opportunity to lead uh, a global team. Um, some of the the smartest and um, brightest people I've worked with actually were, were in several different countries. So, you know, the ability to work with groups, you know, learning different cultures and things like that was amazing. Um, and then, you know, worked in uh, startups, uh, finance, uh, healthcare. So I've, I've had the opportunity, at least within the technology space to work in, in, in most, if not all of the major kind of sectors within, within business. And then one day, I, I don't know why it just literally hit me. Um, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't, I'm a very need to be challenged type of individual and, you know, it had really nothing to do with the place I was at, or, you know, I wasn't super unhappy or anything like that. It just, I, there was, there was something there that just literally wanted more. 
Um, you know, I, I'll try to refrain from using as many cheesy uh, analogies as possible, but that's going to be one plug. Um, and I, I, yeah, so I, I started to think about what I wanted to do and I've always played team sports and I've always been super competitive. I've never played kind of that single man, you know, all up to you type of, of sport. I've always wanted to, and, you know, owning a business, maybe that was an opportunity to, to, to do those types of things. Um, so yeah, I had, you know, some larger conversations with, um, you know, my business coach from, from fan, from fan coach and, um, you know, had the ability to, to narrow some things down. And there was a, a clear winner, uh, regarding, you know, if I was going to, to move out of this, you know, extremely rewarding technology career into franchising, what that may look like and, you know, landed with an unbelievable, uh, franchisor and, and, uh, and power and, an unbelievable franchise in Architect. So, uh, so far, so good. Super pumped. And, you know, I'm still as excited today as I was a whole three weeks ago when I started the venture. So, um, <laughs> while we may be a little early in the journey, you know, it's, it's still, uh, still very exciting time. Yeah, no, it's always rainbows and unicorns. There's nothing, anything bad that ever no. happens as a no. franchise owner. Yeah, <laughs> like so guaranteed to make billions and billions of yeah. dollars. Yeah. Um, and if the Federal Trade Commission is listening, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so um, you mentioned kind of briefly, you are literally first day is uh, May 3rd, which is tomorrow um, in podcast release days <laughs> um so tell us a little bit i'm gonna put you on the spot here you, you mentioned you just kind of had i am doing architect what the heck is architect give us your how's how's the 30 second elevator pitch of what architect is ready go yeah yeah for sure so architect is a uh outdoor living uh full service company that's been around for more than 40 years um one of the largest uh outdoor living um, you know, companies in the space, they specialize in obviously decks and patios, hardscapes, covered porches, sunrooms, basically anything outside outdoor kitchens, um, that, you know, help people enjoy their house on the outside. Um, super, super, um, you know, very, very well organized, um, a franchise, one of which, is uh, prides themselves on building what we say above code. So, you know, not just meeting that minimum spec, but building much, you know, uh, well, well beyond that, which is a differentiator. And um, yeah, so hundred ish franchise ease nationwide. So it's, it's a, it's a big network for sure. Is there any chance Thatcher, Arizona is in your territory? And if uh, so, when can you get out here? Right. Yeah. No, but I know a guy that, you know, just started <laughs> in Arizona who's a phenomenal, um, you know, phenomenal friend that I went through training with. So we can, we can certainly talk. Okay, about good. He can come out here. Um, and so the, I always stay with Archidec and for people it's A-R-C-H-A-D-E-C-K, Archidec.com. Like it's all the cool things outside. It's the stuff you're like, man, I wish my backyard had that and i just every time i'm on their website i get a little like and especially I like, literally just moved into a brand spanking new house that has nothing but dirt in the backyard and i'm like oh man so well last that i was had a pool and all this stuff and now i got them back to dirt again so it is it's just all of these cool things that you're allowing basically like again bringing bringing the cool vision to life for 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 people so your transition, as you talked about, um, the corporate world, IT, yeah. this is building decks and all of these things. Gee, Ben, I'm confused. It's the same, Tim. It's the same. How does what that, <laughs> like, well, how did we, how did we come to that transition? Um, talk a little bit about that for you. Yeah. Um, it, it is certainly not the same. I, I, there are aspects about it, right? I mean, um, you know, from a project management perspective, right? I've, you know, had again in that corporate previous life, ton of time in, you know, leading, implementing different projects um, for organizations. So that piece is certainly lift and shift. Um, the communication um, that you learn in a, in a corporate environment, um, again, transitions very well to uh, went on a visit last night. One of the pain points that, 
you know, this homeowner had with a previous contractor was communication or really lack thereof. So there are a lot of things that are certainly um, applicable in corporate as it relates to, you know, deck building and outdoor space building, if you will. But it is, it is a bit different. Um, I've been, I've been building ever since I was in high school, right? I mean, the, you know, shop class in sixth, seventh and eighth grade was literally, I tried to stay and hide in a corner just so I wouldn't have to go to like the math class or, you know, the social <laughs> studies classes. <laughs> Um, you know, I had a couple of visits from the principal, you know, can't do this. So I did it again the next day, you know, it's typical stuff. Um, I've always had a passion. I've always had a passion for, for building, for taking the pieces and, you know, putting things together and seeing what those pieces look like in the end. Um, and you know, we've, we've done several remodels as a family. So I've always been surrounded with the, the concept of building things or fabbing things. And it's, you know, it's something I love. It's, it's funny because, you know, when I was in the tech space, I always knew I was in the right place because I would work for eight hours, you know, doing whatever in, in IT. And, you know, you can certainly ask my wife this, I would literally go home and I would build servers for another eight hours in my basement. It was really, really strange. Um, you know, and it got so bad to the point where, you know, Casey, my wife would have an issue with her computer and obviously the resident, you know, IT guy, I used to make her like log a ticket in, in the ticketing <laughs> system that I made. And I would call her back as if I were literally on the help desk. And she's like, you're sitting right next to me. Why are you calling me? Um, but that's how I knew, right? And that's how I knew it was in the right space. Because if I was doing, you know, the thing that I did at work at home, obviously there was a love for that and a passion for that. Same thing with the building space, right? Like I, I'm, I've always been building. So I knew that that was certainly a place I wanted to at least explore and and, and start if if there was going to be a change. Now you've got the the you you're the, you're somebody who can and has done the work, but now for Architect, are you going to be out there with the hammer all day long? What's like what's what's that look like for you? Yeah, no, I mean, and and that is probably what I envision pre day one, pre tomorrow in podcast world, as you refer to it, Tim. Um, it's going to be tough, right? It's it's going to be tough because again, that's where my passion is. Um, you know, the, the team at at Empower and, and and the architect team really wants you to focus as an owner on building the business, building an asset, as they call it, right? And you know that term's used widely in in the uh, in the franchise space, but they don't really want you to be swinging the hammers. They want you to be you know making the sales and the relationships which are you know critical to, to everything we do with those clients. So they want you in the house. They they want you to build those relationships with the contractors and things like that. Um, and not necessarily, you know, swinging, swinging the hammers. Um, I, I, I bring that up as a challenge because again, it's something I love to do, but I, I hopefully see it as, as an opportunity as well, because so I, I am originally from Charlottesville, Virginia. You had mentioned that kind of leading in. Um, I've lived here literally all my life. I was, so for those that don't know, Charlottesville is the home of the University of Virginia, home of Thomas Jefferson. I was born on Thomas Jefferson's birthday in a hospital that bared his wife's name. Hospital is known as Martha Jefferson. So when people say, oh, you're Charlottesvillian, I, I, I can't be any more Charlottesville than what I am. Like literally, I don't know how to check another box. The cool thing about that, and one of the reasons why I'm most excited about, you know, Architect is going back to the original question, working with these teams, these phenomenal carpenters and hardscape designers and, you know, masons, guys I've known literally since elementary school, you know what yeah. I mean? And and teams that are just really good at what they do. So to be able to, to, to build things with people like that and teams like that. It, it, it's 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 an unbelievable feeling you know hopefully that yeah. that'll 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 stay but i'm super pumped for for that aspect of it too when i think it's one of the advantages of a franchise like architect for your for your your customers right is what's the, what's the fear of every every homeowner that wants to get some project done how am i going to find anybody that's good that's reliable that's like that all of the stuff 
and you're walking into the home going like, no, I got it. That's, that's, yeah. that's one of the reasons why you're using us. We know the best people. We're going to get them in the right, right position to be successful. Right. For so, sure. For um, sure. and, and, and I know with empower, there's tons of support. You've got great connections, but if somebody maybe doesn't, they've got tons of support on how you find the subcontractors and know the people to work with. But I think there's sometimes there's a fear when when people don't have those relationships, oh my God, subcontractors, it's so hard. That's the whole point of the business is that's your selling point. And the beauty is if a sub isn't any good, right? Like it's not an employee. You're like, no, 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 sorry. You're you're yep. done. And, and the good ones are going to realize, oh yep. my gosh, Ben is my meal ticket. He's got yep. all of these projects going on. If I just could do a good job, like they're going to be like buying you lunch and sending you flowers and I don't know, like, <laughs> Buying you free passes to go up to Monticello and, yeah, and uh, for sure and, and take the tour, which by the way, they could use a really nice deck. So <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. Um, writing that down. Yeah, there you go. Hey everyone, I want to take a moment to spotlight one of our premier franchise partners, First Team. First Team is a content restoration company. What is a content restoration company, you might ask? Well, everyone is familiar with the companies that come clean up the mess after an emergency, like a fire or a flood. Those companies come clean up the mess and put your house back to livable, but they don't touch your actual stuff. First Team is there for what really matters, your stuff. Like furniture, clothes, photo albums, even your killer collection of baseball cards. Since it's easier to repair than replace, insurance companies love First Team, and all of those emergency restoration companies you see everywhere, not only are they not your competition, but they are your referral partners. Also, since First Team doesn't do the emergency part, their owners enjoy a great nine to five type of lifestyle business, a steady stream of insurance and referral based customers. And as part of Empower Brands, First Team owners receive training and support that is second to none. Here at Fran Coach, we'd love to help you find the perfect franchise known. And maybe, just maybe, it is First Team. So get in touch with us today to learn more about becoming a first team franchise owner and let us help you create your better tomorrow. Hey everyone, I wanted to take a quick break from our podcast to tell you about our amazing friends at Entrepreneur. If you're looking to become a franchisee or simply learn more about business ownership, and guys, let's be honest, you're listening to the Franchising 101 podcast, so we know you have some interest in this. And I really encourage you to go to entrepreneur.com to check out all of their great content and resources. Seriously, Entrepreneur has everything, all the way from a bookstore to the best podcast webinars and videos, plus information on upcoming events and the latest articles that seriously, they cover all aspects of franchising and business ownership. If you're having trouble deciding which franchise is right for you, start with Entrepreneur's renowned Franchise 500 ranking, which highlights the best franchises of 2022. For 45 years and counting now, Entrepreneur has been and continues to be the most widely recognized and respected authority in the franchise market. Digital and print subscriptions are available so you never miss out on anything. So seriously, what are you waiting for? Go to entrepreneur.com right now and learn more. I would mention kind of like the, I said the word fear for a second was subs, but I want to go back to your journey with this. And and how, how did you overcome? There had to be some fear of like, you've been in a career, like the same one, right? Um, been successful they paid you on the regular basis, right? A, yeah. Like a, a fair a fair wage. And you're like, I am stepping away from that yeah. to start my own business. Like how much of a hurdle was that for you? How did you kind of get over that? Yeah, no. And it's it's kind of weird to talk about, right? Because, you know, it, it, the the previous career was was extremely rewarding. And yes, they they paid on time, like even twice a month usually. <laughs> so it's like, you know, why would I even think about, you know, all of these things and, and, and transition? And, you know, if I do, how do I, where do I start? Um, right. yeah, it, it, again, for me, it was just kind of wanting more is, is the reason why. Um, I, I think for me, I'm in a bit of a different space from a, okay, I've made the decision to at least explore it. How do I 
what are the next steps? Um, so, so my wife is, as I think you may know, um, Tim, my wife is a franchise coach, um, and she actually owns and operates her own franchise, which is, um, you know, extremely rewarding for her at times. It's, you know, not as rewarding in others, which is <laughs> franchising, you know, by yes. definition, but yep. I think the, the experience that, that she's gotten from running that business and being that franchise coach of what she absolutely loves to do. It, it was almost like I I had that up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA select start cheat code. You know what I mean? And the, the, the old school Contra Nintendo deal. Yeah. Because she already, she's, she's already done it, right? She's already, she knows what franchising is. She knows the hiring challenges, the retention challenges, even though the businesses are slightly different, a lot of the principles are the same, you know, yeah. the customer service aspect of things are the same. Um, so she literally came to me after I filled out the friend coach questionnaire, which is phenomenal, by the way. Um, you know, she's like, I know of one and only one. <laughs> oh, do tell, please. You know, like you're, you're killing me. Let me know. And, and the franchise was, was architect. And she's like, you know, obviously you love to build as like, check, you yeah. know, and, she has, you know, been fortunate enough to work with them in the past. She raved of the the leadership there um, within the franchise or uh, had visited the campus a, a few times. And she's like, you know, to bring another business into the family, because that's really what it is. It's not just yeah. my business. You know, it's we as a collective family group are running these businesses I only want one and that's, that's the architect franchise. So yeah, went down, did, did the thing and agreed with her evaluation and, you know, kind of progressed those steps from there. But yeah, it was, it was, she was a huge help. She continues to be a huge help and, you know, she's, she's got a, a very, you know, large array of different franchises she could have chosen from, but the support from the architect franchise specifically is kind of what, what sold us on it. Yeah. Sometimes it's, really crystal clear it helps she had a little bit more knowledge about about you right from that from that standpoint and um and of all of the amazing coaches we have at Fran coach Casey is by far my favorite one that's married to you yeah for, yeah agreed she she's so, my favorite yeah her her dad refers to me as his favorite son-in-law and, and she's an only kid and I'm trying to think, is that a compliment or a, you know, being a single child, I'm the only son-in-law that he has. Is that a compliment or a, you know, some type of dig? I don't know, but we're going to go with compliment. So, sure. um, yeah. So, um, so how is that now in, in, in the household, right? So we have really essentially three businesses. You've got architects, she has her franchise and she's a, a, doing an amazing job for us with Fran coach. Um, like, has that changed the dynamic, like, you know, around, around, around the dinner table, um, just from the, from the conversations, you know, so we've, we've actually have experience in working with the same company before. Um, uh, actually we did that for, I don't know, almost 10 years and, in other, in another, in another company. So we, we actually do better when we have things to talk about related to work. It's yeah. so strange, right? Like normally it's a, no, you know, let's get our own space and you do your own thing. It's, it's, it's kind of weird, but for us having that commonality to, to, to talk about work is, is actually beneficial for us. Um, so while it's changed a, a bit because we do talk more franchise stuff, it's nothing new for us that we haven't really done in the past. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it'll, again, this is, we're talking pre-launch day, which is tomorrow. So it'll be, you know, hit me up in seven days and we'll see how good it is. Right. We may not be talking at all. I don't know. Yeah. You're going to be like, why the hell did you send me over to that franchise? Right. I hate you. Right. Well, it's her so, fault. Regardless of how this happens, it's her fault if it goes back. hundred, hundred percent. Um, you guys have a, you guys, you guys have a son and I'm going to like, and I think I should know this, but like, ten, he's about the same age as my kid. So 10 ish, right. 10. 10. Okay. Um, have you seen anything? And I know it's early for you, but like, um, have you seen anything where he's kind of like seen a difference of like, oh, mom and dad have a business now versus versus a versus a job? Yeah, that's interesting because you know, yesterday when when he was coming off his uh, initial 
um, work session building decks because we're going to abuse the the child labor laws as much as we can. <laughs> um, so for the county of Albemarle, I'm kidding. He was at school <laughs> yesterday. So um, half day. It, yeah, half day. <laughs> those holes, those footers had to get dug somehow, Tim. I mean, yeah, I wasn't exactly. doing it myself. Exactly. Um, yeah, it's it's it, it has been a change, and because I think he he likes the idea of you know mom and dad being business owners. I, I don't know why he's just like, oh, you mean for the business? And when I worked in IT, like I went to like a, a, a career day thing, and I took some you know computer chips and I made king or you know key rings out of them. And he's like, oh, this is cool. What am I supposed to talk to my friends about? You know, so, but he's rocking the, you know, the, the, the architect swag. He's wearing the hats to school, you know, all the cool things, but he, it seems to be more relatable now because I yeah. think he, he can understand it a little bit more, but he's, I think he's pumped. I mean, he's excited because he's, yeah. he's brought it up in conversations, you know, with other people. So it's, it's, no. been neat. It, it's cool to see. And I, I my, I'm, my son, Logan is almost 11. So basically this is all he's known that, that, that I do. And I, like, I grew up with, you know, everybody my age, right. Go to college, get a job. Like you'll work there until you retire and you'll get your gold, gold watch and your pension. Well, our parents lied to us. That was a bunch of crap. Right. And so to be able to see him like go to school, get a great education, go to college, go get a great job. There's all of those things, but it's been cool for me to see with with Logan and then with with Danielle's son, um, who's was, who's was sixteen as well. To see them, like they get to see something. There's a different path. You want to create your own way. Yep. It's there to see them think. To see them wear like literally. I just got a new franchising one on one podcast T shirt. Um, I'm dragging both of our boys are going to a, a trade show here at the end of the month. So I'm like, we need some new stuff. He wore that bad boy to school today. Right. So, and so cool. like, because fifth grade at Thatcher is definitely the demographic for the podcast. So, <laughs> or, you know, maybe one of the teachers, I don't know, but it is, it's, it's super cool. And I think it's one thing people don't think about with their kids, regardless of the age is that they're, they're seeing mom or dad or for you guys, both being able to like be, you guys are super highly educated, smart people had great careers working for others, but there's another path that they, whether maybe they take over mom or dad's business someday, maybe it inspires them to do something else down the road. Plus it just, it you, you guys aren't asking for time off if they're, you know, like got to, you know, drop off, pick up. We've got this practice. We've got that going on. You've got all of that freedom and flexibility within your life to be able to make this happen. And so I know that's, that'll, Case has had that for a while, but that's a little bit new for you. But I know that's something that you'll, you'll really like being able to have that additional flexibility for, for things with, 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 with your son. Yeah, no, for sure. And it's, it's interesting that you touched on kind of the alternate route to success, right? There's, you know, I used to call it the Microsoft way of, you know, there's 15 different ways to right click something and do whatever, right? It, it you know, especially the trades, which I, I think are amazing, right? There's so much opportunity. And, you know, speaking with some of the other franchise owners, there is a huge opportunity for people that are driven to do great work, good work, and, and, you know, present themselves in a way that's different than other tradesmen in that same space for an unbelievable life. Right. And, and yeah. I think that's what I'm excited about. I'm not certainly going to go down a Mike Rowe type of podcast session here, even though I think it's, I love that. Right. I mean, I right. just love that focus on the trades and what they can do. It, it's yeah. College isn't the only way it's certainly a way for a lot and that's totally cool. Right. But yeah, right. there's, there's so many different avenues and opportunities. That's a, that's a great point for sure. Yep. And and I think just in franchising in general of, you know, the, the things that are just ridiculously unsexy that an architect is a sexy business, right? I mean, it's still, it's, it's a, it's a craft, it's a trade, but you are like creating these magnificent things, yep. but the, you know, like crime scene cleanup, franchises that pick up dog poop, right? I mean, not things that people tend to think about, right? Like, you know, sure. mommy, daddy, when I grow up, I want a business that like cleans up meth labs. How the hell you know what a meth lab is, right? <laughs> like, so, but there's all of those possibilities out, out there. And I, and again, I just, it's, it's this whole world and you guys have been around it longer, but it's this whole world that like is right in front of us. 
that people people don't don't realize. My wife created a while back an Instagram page, and we were joking the other day that we got to get it fired back up. And I think she calls like franchises in the wild or something, right? And so we're like, we could be going like way too fast down a highway, and my peripheral vision is going to see like a wrap vehicle, right? That right. Is like, oh, there's a franchise. There's one over there. Yep. There's one. Yep. Go to a strip mall, franchise, franchise, not franchise, franchise, not like you just as consumers, you don't realize it, but there's, there's all of these things. There's just amazing possibilities. So, um, the, um, one last thing I want to fire at you and I'll, again, always, always good talking to you. I'm so excited for you, um, to get started with Architect. Um, but so and again, you had a little basis of understanding of franchising before you started looking at this, yeah. but you still went through all the same like stuff like should i do it is this the right thing what if i failed that like all the kind of the fear mechanisms and the things that pop up so there's somebody sitting out here listening to this that for reasons that defy logic haven't reached out to our team yet like what the hell are they waiting on but yeah what would you tell somebody that is sitting there thinking you know like you at least kind of liked your job there are people that hate their jobs but you you liked it but wanted something more more control over what that looked like what do you tell somebody sitting there and not sure if they should even kind of like explore this further yeah no and and that's tough right just because it's so different for everyone but i think the commonalities are that anxiety and i, I think one of the big things not so much for me but things i've talked about with other franchisees are just the unknown and you know not to um, you know, put another plug in for friend coach, but that's exactly what you guys do. Right. I think that's, it's such a beneficial, you know, engagement that it, it really helps kind of put those things at bay. I, I, I think the, the way it was told to me, and it was a great way um, to kind of explain it is if you're looking to make a jump, you know, for whatever reason, and you know, there's millions of reasons why people want to make a jump you know, would you bet on yourself, right? Would okay. you, you know, put a hundred on black being Ben at the casino table regarding if he's going to make it or if he's going to be able to overcome these challenges or right. if he's going to, you know, dedicate himself to to making the franchise work, whatever it takes, right? Because, right. you know, what's the saying? Everyone wants to be a star until they have to put in the work, right? right. And there's a ton of work. There's a lot of benefits to running your own your own business, right? And you had mentioned one just now, right? The flexibility. It's it's unmatched. Right. But if you would bet on yourself to be successful and you're able to get some of the anxiety tempered by working with someone at Fran Coach, right? At least have the discussion, right? Just see where it goes and then you know make that decision. But that initial step is the critical piece. And everything else kind of you know builds from there, I think. Yeah, and and don't be shy on the plugs for Fran Coach; those are totally yeah. acceptable. But it's yeah. the, we literally did like a podcast last week was and it was kind of prompted by somebody to ask me the question was like, why do people not like they start right. talking to you? Why do they not become a franchise owner? And it's kind of like and uh, like my sports brain tends to equate things that way. But I'm like, not everybody wants the ball in their hand for the last shot. Yep. Right. And, and yep. that's, and that's okay. Um, and we'll ask people this sometimes, like where they get that little fear. I'm like, where in your professional history, have you been a miserable failure? Like, right. well, I, didn't, I didn't say personal. I said, I said prof <laughs> professional, right? So uh, marriage number two, right? So um, not that's the failure. I'm on marriage number two. Cause the first one was a failure. Just good, good, good correction. Chance my wife was listening. Um, but it, it's, it's really that. And, and then when you combine it to understand like the most important thing in a franchise success, well, it's you as the franchise owner, but it's what is, what's your day in a life. And you talked about this, right? You got a passion for building. You're not going to do it, but you've got the connections. You like building those contractor relationships, the customer service with the family and just wowing people with what you're going to do. Right. Right. Like sure. that, that's it now. Like, Again, is it always going to be rainbows and unicorns? Well, no. Um, but you mentioned one other thing. I want to throw this out there really quick before we go is, is other owners. You've already done a great job. And again, part of this is, is architect and empower because they really foster these relationships. 
is I don't care how amazing the support is from a franchisor and you're in one with amazing support, your best people to connect with that really can help you are other owners. And, and, and again, architect, you, you've already mentioned like one of your neighbor ones has been super open arms and, and helping you with this. You've gotten to connect a couple from, from empower day and training and all of those things. People sometimes kind of forget about what that, like how valuable that can be. Cause there's nobody that understands what you're going through better than somebody else already already there so that just for just i was i don't i don't think even for us we do a good enough job of talking about like that support structure so it's super cool you've already been able to connect with a handful of them and yeah. um it'll it won't be long before there's going to be newbies in there looking up to 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 ben right and wow. going oh my gosh how did you how did you how did you how did you make that first 20 billion dollars that you made um yeah. and and and, and, you know, I kind of joke about that, but it's, yes, we all want money, but the, the happiness and just that lifestyle piece. And for you, that, that challenge piece are going to be huge. So, sure. um, super cool. Sure. So, um, thank you, my friend for, for yeah. coming on to, to chat with us and always like, again, you are, you know, my, my, my favorite adult Floyd, um, in the, in the, in the house. Well, there's only one adult, right? There's two kids and one adult. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, but th thank you so much for, for, for coming on and, and, um, you know, maybe here in a year, we'll get you back and talk about the successes and some of the challenges and all those things. Cause it is, you're like, you, you're, you're in the honeymoon phase right now. Yeah. So it's, uh, sure. it's all good. So excited. And, and of course, anybody in the wonderful Charlottesville, Virginia area needs something done. Um, we can reach out to, uh, what is the official like website name? Architect of so it's it's architect of Central Virginia and the Valley, uh -huh. so Charlottesville, Greater Metropolitan, and then the Valley, which is Harrisburg, Stanton, places like that. So perfect, awesome. Yeah. Best of luck, my friend. Thanks for coming on. We uh, look forward to uh, to talking to you again soon. Thank you, sir. All right. Thanks. See you. And thanks, as always, to all of our loyal podcast listeners. We hope the Franchising 101 podcast continues to provide insight into the amazing possibilities that can be achieved as a franchise owner. Um, if you are ready to learn a little bit more to see if this might be the path for you, please reach out to us, francoach.net, franchising101podcast.net. Um, again, we're always .net here at Fran Coach and Franchising 101. Um, you are always going to be speaking to the Fran Coach team if you're not you've found one of those little imposters out there. So we are here to help you figure this out and ideally help you create your better tomorrow. Thanks everybody for joining us and we look forward to talking with you next week. Have a great day.